G'day and welcome back to the garage. In the last episode of the RM250 build, the controls for the bike were fitted, including the foot pegs, levers and handlebars. Some new frame damage was also repaired and new chain rollers were fabricated and fitted. In this episode, the RM will be back on its wheels for the first time with new rims, spokes and tyres. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with the rear wheel, and like many parts of this restoration, it'll be a combination of new OEM and restored original parts, just like these clips and spacer. But before any parts can be installed on the freshly hydro-blasted hub, new bearings are pressed in. And this is where the fun starts, brand new XL rims. I couldn't find original Suzuki rims anywhere, so these high quality Japanese made rims are a good substitute. The spokes for this bike have all the same bend, and they're all the same length. There's no left or right. They're all the same, which makes this job a bit easier. Before the spokes are installed, we need to identify the inner row and the outer row. To make things easier, the outer row of spokes is installed first. It's a good idea to have a reference photo to check the original spoke pattern. I forgot to do that, but luckily I made a video a while back. I could tell from my original video that for each row, the spokes fit into every fourth hole in the rim. And once you start the pattern, you'll soon realise if there's something wrong. It'll just look wrong, or it won't fit. These spokes really can only go in one way. With the outer row done, the inner row can now be installed. And again, it's every fourth hole on this rim, the pattern is the same. And just like I said earlier, reference the original photo. You'll definitely know if you have something wrong. And with that, half of the spokes are installed. Now it's just a repeat of that process on the other side.
And that's it. The hardest part is complete. Next, the wheel will be trued in this stand, which was made off camera. It consists of this axle and adjustable cones, which can seat in different sized wheel bearings. It also has an adjustable indicator, which is used to show rim run out. As you can see, the spokes are still very loose, so that's the first job. Each nipple is tightened evenly. To start with, I leave one thread showing on each spoke. And with just that adjustment, the wheel is looking a lot better. At this point, the rim offset needs to be considered. The offset is where the rim sits in relation to the hub. Unfortunately, I forgot to measure this before I pulled the rims apart. So I decided to install the wheel in the swing arm and make sure it sits centrally. Luckily, it looks okay. And this is probably helped by the fact that all of the spokes are the same length and that they've all been tightened by the same amount. So now, the rim can be trued. Firstly, the indicator is moved close to the rim edge. This is to show actual run out and we want to keep the gap between the rim and the indicator as consistent as possible. And straight off, for a dirt bike rim, this is really close to acceptable already. In order to straighten the rim, we need to understand that there are two rows of spokes. Tightening the left hand spokes pulls the rim to the left, and tightening the right hand spokes pulls the rim to the right. It really is that simple. So now the rim is stopped where it is furthest away from the indicator. And at this point on the rim, it needs to go left. So, the left hand spokes are tightened in this area. And already, there's an improvement. And now the process is repeated until the run out is within about one millimetre. And with that, I'm satisfied that the axial runout is acceptable. So now it's time to adjust the radial runout, or how far the rim moves up and down. The process here is similar to before. You just need to make sure that the spokes are tightened evenly on both sides so the axial runout that we just fixed isn't affected. The indicator is used to gauge the lowest point on the rim and then the spokes are tightened in this area.
And once that process is repeated a few times, we have the rim within about one millimetre of axial and radial runout. And on a dirt bike wheel, that's more than acceptable. And now the last step is to simply ensure that all the spokes are tight. You can get a torque wrench for this job, but I don't have one, so I go by feel. I think as long as they aren't loose and they aren't super tight, they'll be okay. With the wheel now completed, it's time to have a look at the mounting hardware. And in this case, everything's looking a bit sad, especially this left-hand axle block. So, I'm going to have a go at fabricating a new one. While I was in the fabricating room, I decided to turn up some new wheel spaces to replace the worn out originals. And with everything ready to go, the wheel was installed, along with a new tyre, a new brake disc, and a new OEM sprocket. And then the whole process was repeated at the front end and the bike was back on its wheels for the first time since the project began, nearly 12 months ago.
With the wheels on, it's really starting to look like a bike again. Make sure you keep an eye out for the next episode of the RM250 build, where we'll tackle the braking system. Thanks for watching, see you next time.